Good morning, it's coffee time. If you don't know what this is, that's the kickstand for my phone, so I can't angle the phone up anymore. Breck made pea soup, and he had ham bones left that he saved for Jaw. I think it's pretty obvious Jaw likes the ham bone. And today, my self-made tie-dye shirt. Well, we're heading to the dog park to meet Sam Tripoli and Pollyanna. Sorry the vlog was a little late today. Having a lot of trouble getting it to upload from the uh, editing program. Finally got it figured out this morning. Got it up. I love the video. God, I hate the camera. I just, I'm gonna probably go to um, AT&T and see if maybe I've got a setting wrong or see if there's anything wrong with my phone. I desperately need a better camera than what we're doing this on. So much good content and it's all coming out pixelated. Can't let that happen for too much longer. Where this Zach's famous pawn shop is here, that used to be the Casa de Empeño pawn shop from the Big Lebowski that Walter Sobchak owned. Sorry, what I meant was this is where the dude picks up Walter and Walter's security company is right next door to this, as you can see here. Yeah, if you're a Big Lebowski fan, the scene where the dude rolls up to pick up Walter, played by John Goodman, and Walter comes out with the briefcase full of undies, the, the ringer. That right there was the, uh, that used to be the pawn shop. It's still a pawn shop now, but they changed the names and everything. Because when I first moved out here, within like the first two days, everywhere that I drove past was like a scene from the movie. I found them all pretty much right away. And that was the first one I noticed. Big thank you to AT&T device support. They just replaced my phone. We're on. Oh, we may have our solution. That big thank you that we just put in there to AT&T device support, they did the unthinkable. Took my camera in, well my phone in, told them all the pixelation looking problems I'm having. And uh, the guy who helped me has actually helped me before when I had my problem with the editing program. He looked over the phone for about 20 minutes. He goes, you know what? I'll just replace the phone for you. So we got a new phone, new camera. Big ups to AT&T for coming through for the old boy. Well, I went shopping and got Jaw some stuff. While they were uh, switching my phone over, I had an hour to kill. Went and got him some uh, food, some treats. Oh yeah. And a Halloween costume. See, the funny thing about this Halloween costume is they only had one of this costume at all in any size, and it happened to be a small. So, boom. Let me see the skeleton. Let me see the skeleton. Come here. Ja, come here. Are you hiding? You ready to go? Come on. A fun little uh, couple of houses to check out today that I wanted to see myself I've never got to see. The Hollywood homes of Bella Lugosi, Dracula. Bella Lugosi seemed to love to live in Beachwood Canyon because he really loved to hike the Hollywood sign. From what I understand, he, um, he would have his wife park at the foot of the sign, well, at the foot of where the trail started, he would walk from his house all the way to the top, and then he would wave from the top and send her a signal, and then she would release her Great Danes, well, their Great Danes, and they would run up the side uh, of the hill to get to him. Something he did, they said, every day. He also liked it because he would walk from his house all the way down to Hollywood Boulevard every day. So here we go. The first house the Bell Lugosi owned up here in Beachwood Canyon. It's a pretty nice house. I mean, at least the design looks pretty great. I tried to come up here and film it about an hour ago. 
and they were having some work done so there was a utility vehicle parked here in the driveway but here's the funny thing so like I told you 1934 Bela Lugosi lived in this house and he lived here for a year and then he decided to move and he moved over to the house that we will see in a little bit in Outpost the steel house made of all steel termite proof earthquake proof fireproof Johnny Depp also lived there we will be going there later he lived there for a year and then he missed this place so he ended up buying the house right next door when it was available and this is the house that everyone seems to think that he loved the most up here from everything I can read this was the house that he loved the most and uh, here's the driveway just let me get around here I can imagine he would have loved this place because it overlooked Hollywood Boulevard it overlooked the Hollywood sign if you look online look up 2835 Westshire you can actually see pictures of the inside and what the inside of the house looks like but the reason that I think he would have really loved this place is knowing that he was such an avid walker look at this another one of those Hollywood staircases that we've went down before and I think I'll take this one now and see where it goes he would take this I assume it probably will take us down to Beechwood Canyon but I can imagine it sure does that he would have taken this god think about that Bella Lugosi every day that he lived up here would have taken this path all the way down actually this looks like this might go to somebody's house I don't know um, he would have taken this path all the way down or wherever and he would have hiked all the way up to the Hollywood sign and back. So all the times that I've hiked to the Hollywood sign, Bella Lugosi had done that as well. Probably every day, just as often as I did. Now I can tell you, from my house, I live quite a bit further than where Bella Lugosi lived. But from my house, there and back's a 10 mile hike. So he's probably putting in a five mile hike every day. Yep, this sure does. Now look at this house. Isn't that cool? That big birdhouse up here. Let's check that out. You know what's funny? I, I'm over here a lot. We actually, instead, I made a right to get up here to Bella's house. But if you make a left, that's the way that we, we take to go to the park every day, John and I. And uh, I'll show you where that entrance is. I've been here so many times, I've never even seen this. I've never even seen this little sidewalk looks like a little alleyway I didn't even know this was here see where John I go to uh, to hike is right up that street we make a left right up here so you can imagine and just by looking at the stairs I think we can all tell that is not the kind of job that would be done today to someone's satisfaction that's more of an ancient style or an older style classic style of stairs so we're gonna walk our way back up we'll take one last look at the uh, Bell Lugosi houses and then I'm gonna head over to Outpost and I'm gonna get the house that he that he and Johnny Depp both owned on here and I'm gonna get the house that he bought when he was cast as Dracula in 1927. He was living in the Hollywood Athletic Club at the time, bought his first house and lived there for 10 years. Well, he didn't technically live there for 10 years. He owned it for 10 years. He lived there from about 27, 28, till 1934. And then he moved to the first house I showed you today, here. Then he moved over to a house we'll see later and then back to this house up here if he was a daily walker and a daily hiker and a man of nature he was taking these stairs I guarantee it so
like I said, that house right there was the first one he lived at. Then he left after a year, lived in the other house for a year, then missed this neighborhood. So he bought this place. Now, even though I've already shown you guys the street view from where the antique store was the other day of his house, I think I'll go down there again and just put this on there again, show you what the other side of his house looks like from Beach. And right there is the house, 2835 Woodshire. That's the one, the second house that he lived at up here. You couldn't see quite as much from the front, but that is the beautiful top and back. And I'll get another angle of it for you here in a second. And there's an even better shot of Bela Lugosi's house. Now, like I said, if you go online and you type in 2835 Westshire, Los Angeles, you can find an inside picture of this, and especially the inside of this room where that glass is. Just a little cool thing I thought would be fun today to go visit the Hollywood homes of Bela Lugosi. Dracula. Also, if you've never seen White Zombie, the White Zombie movie's worth your time too. That's another great Bela Lugosi movie. Now this house right here was Bela Lugosi's house for one year, in between the years that he lived up on Beechwood. You know the two houses that we just saw? Remember I told you that he moved away for a year? This is where he moved to. Not a real great um, view of the house, and there's not even a sidewalk over here, and it's a busy street, sort of, even though it's in the hills. A lot of people use this for commuting, so there's not a whole lot that um, there is to see. It goes down pretty far. You can see it goes down to, all the way down there. But, uh, but this was it, and this definitely would have been here when he lived here. That's an old-style street lamp post. But yeah. Right there would have been Dracula's house. Notice the gargoyles? And that would have been his garage. Now I'm gonna take you up to the house that he lived, lived in before he went to Beechwood. He lived there for 10 years. Bell Lugosi was a man who moved a lot, as we can tell. I mean, we're, we hit four houses today, um, or we're gonna hit four houses today. And um, that house is uh, commonly known as, as the, uh, the Bell Lugosi house that was um, fireproof. It was made of all steel. See, I guess in back when this outpost estates where uh, these two houses were located, were, when it was formed, they uh, they prided themselves on making the houses and the views um, kind of fit into the nature setting that they were already in without disturbing it as much. And um, they wanted to make the houses structurally superior to just about anywhere else. So this house was made of all steel and it was considered uh, fireproof, earthquake proof, termite proof. And Johnny Depp actually lived there for a while. Even though there's nothing real exciting about this place, and it's been remade over numerous times over the years. Bella Lugosi actually lived here for 10 years. 2260 Maravilla. 10 years. That house there on Maravilla that we just looked at, 2260, that would have been the house that Bella Lugosi first owned. See, in 1927 when he was cast as Dracula, he had been doing it on stage um, all over the world and he had kind of m moved out to Los Angeles and was living at the Hollywood Athletic Club on uh, Sunset. He was living there in 27 when he was uh, found out that he was going to be Dracula in the motion picture and he immediately came up and bought this house. He lived there for 10 years um, in I believe 1934 is when he lived at the uh, first house that we, sh that we looked at up in Beechwood, and then he moved to the house, the all steel house uh, that Johnny Depp also lived in, and he lived in there in 1935. Then in 36, he moved over to the next house right beside the one that we first saw. And he lived there, and then uh, for some odd reason, he moved to the valley. He moved uh, to Lancashire and then to Whipple.
Look at the buffalo. Now I'm heading to the local barber in my neighborhood. Not because I need a haircut, because I need some new razors, and they sell the Dollar Shave Club razors there. Because of that, we need new ones. That took about 30 seconds. That's the way business should Look at that. I can actually film the sky without it pixelating and looking all watercolored and man, beautiful.